mathematicians. Uh, we are getting into lesson 13 and in lesson 13 we are going to uh, continue multiplying and oh, in this multiplying, sorry, we are actually going to be doing some conversions. We are going to be converting a lot of, um, I think like days to years, years to days, months to years forwards and backwards and upside down. Uh, we are going to con use some methods um, for conversion that we've worked on a little bit in module one. We're going to continue working on it's a very specific Eureka uh, conversion method and it takes some practice. I'm going to tell you it's not E-word, um, but anything that is new, anything that is difficult, with enough practice, it will become more comfortable. So you guys uh, are going to need to take this really seriously and really commit to this conversion practice. Uh, and really, um, you're just going to have to memorize the formula. And we will do that just uh, through practice, 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 practice. So you're going to see me uh, do a few problems here. And then you will come to school tomorrow. And you will practice, um, and it's gonna be great. And uh, let's take a look at some problems here, guys. Here we go, guys. Uh, we are getting into lesson 13 on this gorgeous uh, 6th of November, 2018. Okay, so the directions here say solve. The first one is done for you. Convert weeks to days. So we, in lesson 13, <coughs> <clears throat> are going to be working on a very specific strategy that we can use to convert. Is it the only strategy that exists? No. We are going to practice this strategy because it is great. Is this, um, within this strategy, it's going to take really, just like I said in the intro, some memorization of the formula. And we're going to practice and set up our problems like this every single time. And usually on like the fourth or fifth problem, it will become easier and easier. In the beginning, just like when you're learning to ride a bike or learning how to play the piano or learning how to do a cartwheel, it's not going to be easy. But we're going to continue persevering and eventually we will get it. Um, okay, so let's look at this one. It's done for us. Uh, the first line says six weeks equals six times one week. Six copies of one week. The first line, you guys, every single time is what I like to think of as the unpacking line. We're just unpacking what we have. Six weeks has been given to us equals six copies of one week. This side is equal to this side. That's what this fabulous symbol represents, okay? The first line is our, our unpacking line. Our second line is where the magic really happens and that's our conversion line. The conversion happens very specifically. So our second line here, so we have one, two, three lines. Here's what's happening in the conversion line. This number and this number will remain the same. This unit and these units <coughs> this is where the converting happens. This unit, one week, and this unit, seven days, are different units. However, they are equal to one another. I feel like all of us should be really comfortable with the fact that one week is equal to seven days. If you tilt your head to the right, you can see that this is an equal sign. I drew an equal sign between one week and seven days because these are equal to one another. However, they're different units. What we're doing is converting weeks to days. We're starting with weeks and we want to end with days. The second line is where that is actually happening. <coughs> we are introducing our conversion. We are converting from weeks to days. The second line is really where that happens. The third line is the evaluate or solve line. Conversion is happening here. Our third line, we just have to think, well, what is six times seven? Well, six times seven is 42. Six copies of seven days, 42 days. That's it. It's very, very straightforward as long as you commit the formula to memory. So let's go ahead and look at this one together. 
here we're going to convert years to days. We are going to number our three lines and remember what happens in each line. Our first line, you guys, is our unpacking line. So seven years equals seven copies of one year. We're unpacking <clears throat> in our first line. We're unpacking what does seven years really mean? Well, it just means seven copies of one year. Okay, cool. Just like over here, six weeks, what does it mean? Well, it just really means that we're making six copies of one week. Our second line, you guys, is our conversion line. We are going to go from years to days, but please remember that this unit and this the value of this unit and this unit have to be, tell your head to the right, equal. They have to be equal to one another. So ask yourselves how many days we're converting from years to days. How many days are equal to one year? And this is something that I hope you guys have memorized. If you don't, we will have to make note of this. There are 365 days in one year. Yes, these are two different units, but if you tilt your head to the side, you can see, oh, right, one year is equal to 365 days. They represent the same amount of time. So our second line is almost finished. We're just going to bring down our seven. Um, just like here in the first example, our six, so what we're looking for is six weeks. So our number should be consistent between uh, the first line and our second line. So we have our expression written for line two. It's going to be seven times 365 days. And our third line, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry guys, um, we are going to solve we are going to determine what is 7 times 365. And you can just work that out uh, in any space that you have. Um, um, we we know that in Eureka Land we don't have a ton of extra workspace, so feel free to grab an, a separate sheet of paper to determine what 365 times 7 is. 7 times 5 is 35. Here's that great uh, multiplication that we've been working on. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 3 is 45, and then 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. So, as it happens, you guys, 7 years is equal to 2,555 days. Wow, who knew? Dudes, I grabbed another problem here. Um, let's grab another color. I grabbed another problem here that does not have all of the support as our first two examples did. But um, let's first read what's going on. Here we're being asked to convert pounds to ounces. And we're starting with, <coughs> excuse me, 12.5 pounds. So that first bit of information is going to be a part of our first line. Our first line, this should sound fairly familiar, is our unpacking line. We're just going to unpack what we are given to uh, start with. Our second line is going to be our converging li conversion line, or the line in which we convert. Our third line, is going to be our solve or evaluate line. In our conversion line, we're going to write out an expression. In our third line, we're going to solve that expression. Here, we're being we're converting pounds to ounces. Okay, so let's unpack that. Oh, before we unpack that, I want to point out a few things. This will never stop bugging me. <laughs> The um, abbreviation for pounds is LB. I actually should look into why it has such a strange abbreviation, but pounds is abbreviated with LB. This is not pronounced libs, but this is the abbreviation for pounds. <coughs> it's also important to note that there are 16 ounces in one 
Okay. Um, you are going to be responsible for memorizing some really basic conversions. This is one of them. You need to file this away in that amazing brain of yours. The fact that 16 ounces live inside of one pound. This would be really good to write it in your notebook right now. I'll give you a moment. 16 ounces, one pound, it's in your notebook. Great, okay, let's move on. First line, unpack. Well, we're starting with 12.5 pounds. We're going to unpack what that means. 12.5 pounds equals 12.5 copies of one pound. And I'm putting that one pound in parentheses. Okay, so we've unpacked. We've torn this apart. 12.5 copies of one pound is equal to 12.5 pounds. The first line is not going to blow your mind. It's really just unpacking and setting ourselves up for the next line, which could very well blow your mind. This is where we're going to convert. This is where the magic happens. So we're going to bring down our 12.5 because we are looking to convert 12.5 pounds after all. We are going to make 12.5 copies of some amount of ounces. This line and this line should have what sort of relationship? That those two have to be equal to one another. They're two different units, but they have to be equal to one another. They have to represent the same amount. I am imparted this amazing wisdom on you the fact that 16 ounces live inside one pound. So if I have one pound and we're looking to convert that to ounces, what number goes here? <gasps> oh, I know. Yes, it's 16. One pound, oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, I pressed the button, I pressed the button. Oh no, easy there. Oh my gosh. This button, you guys, I have to, <sighs> lordy. I'm so sorry, let's get rid of that. Okay, don't press the button, just write a 16. One pound and 16 ounces represent the same amount. So they're two different units, but they are equal to one another. This is so important here in the convert line. Now we have written this beautiful expression. Our final step is to solve. We are looking at 12.5 times 16. That is perfect because we have been working on multiplying numbers with decimals in them. Let's look at 12.5 times 16. I'm going to do some estimation to guide my final decimal placement. I'm going to round 12.5 to 10, and I'm going to round 16 to 20, and I'm going to think about the fact that 10 times 20 is equal to 200. And I'm going to use this estimation to guide my final decimal placement. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, let's look at six times five, which is 30. Bring the three over. Six times two is 12 plus three is 15. Great, bring that one over. And now we're looking at six times one, which is six plus one is seven. I've used this number. I've multiplied six through. We've used these friends. Let's cross them out because we're finished and we don't wanna get confused. Now we're moving into our second partial product. We're multiplying this 10 into five. 10 times five is 50. We've established our proper place value. One times two is two. And then one times one is one. Let's go ahead and add up these partial products. We have a zero. Five plus five is 10. Bring our one over. Seven plus two is nine plus one is 10. Wow, it's a lot of zeros. And then one plus one is two. Okay, friends. So solve. We are, oh, actually, before I finish that, you guys, what have I done? I forgot my I forgot my decimal my decimal point. Oh yeah, yeah, I miss Scalamaris. <coughs> Let's think about where our decimal point belongs, you guys. Would it make sense to put our decimal point here? Is two thousand super close to two hundred? No way. What about right here? To make our final product two hundred. Is two hundred point zero pretty close to two hundred? Uh, indeed, yes. Yes, it is. I think that's a marvelous place for your decimal point. Keep in mind that uh, we have 
tenths, we multiplied um, 16 copies of 12.5 tenths. And in our final answer, although this is zero, uh, we also have our tenths value, our tenths place value represented. Okay, so what we're looking at here, you guys, is 12.5 LB pounds <laughs> is equal to 200 ounces. Okay, so these three steps are so important. The secret word for uh, to be checked in on Wednesday is please tell me what the three steps are for converting. What are the three steps that we are going to be working on in lesson 13 in order to convert? For those of you not realizing, I am underlining with a orange squiggly the three steps that we are going to use um, in lesson 13 as we uh, work on these conversions. Okay? Proud of you guys. Can't wait to practice with you more tomorrow. See you then. Thank you.